Today I received this signal generator, which I have to put together myself. It's this one here, the KK Moon XR2206 High Precision Function, Function Signal Generator Do It Yourself Kit. Um, it's uh, I don't know, I didn't want to spend too much money on a signal generator, especially for my first one, and I figured it'd be fun to just put it together myself and kind of see what it's all about. So I could do a looks like one megahertz. Square wave, triangle wave, 50 hertz sine wave, uh, 1 kilohertz square wave, 1 kilohertz sine wave, and so forth. Um, here's all the parts that it comes with. So yeah, it comes in a bag like this. And um, yeah, made in China. Uh, this little white thing I presume is the, the manual of how to put it together. Probably a schematic or something. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up and put it together. I'll fast forward it so you guys don't have to sit and watch me put it together for a long time. So here's what the paper says. Uh, so it shows you the board that it comes with and uh, the list of parts that you're getting. And it also shows you, let's see here, some notes and a schematic. And uh, here's, the, here's the board that it comes with. Uh, so it has all the the location, uh, the pinouts all like pretty much ready to go with the labeling. And so it should be easy to put together, hopefully. So it took me about a little less than 10 minutes to fit all the components onto this. I haven't soldered anything down. I just put it in their places. Um, so a few things you got to watch out for is uh, the resistors here. They have different values, some of them. So you have to make sure you're putting the correct ones in the right places. Just measured it with my multimeter just to make sure I got the right ones and that they're all good. And, and to figure out uh, how many ohms each one is. Uh, and pick the right ones for the right places. And I did the same, well, uh, for the capacitors, it's written on there. So you have to make sure with the capacitors to put them in the right uh, polarity because these electrolyte ones, they have a polarity. So on the board, there's a little circle marking here. Let me take this one out to show you. Uh, let's see. You see that little circle marking there where it says C3? The shaded area is the negative side. And on the capacitor, over here, we got, let's see if I could get this in view, there we go. That little white strip you see there, going down the side there with the negative sign, that's your negative uh, lead. The side with the white stripe goes into the shaded side. So you just put it in that way. Like that so the shaded side has the white stripe it's these two here have the same uh, resistance but this one is different so if you look at the bottom you will see that there's this number down there let me see if I could get this in the right uh, view there we go okay see it says here B503 uh, so on the schematic it shows you which one goes where B503, you get two of these, and this one goes here, like that. Um, let's see, uh, apart from that, uh, the other capacitors, uh, yeah, they, they don't matter. Uh, I think they're the ceramic type, and they don't have a polarity. Um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. Double check everything when you're putting it on, just to make sure you have the right pieces in the right places. Uh, I'm pretty confident I got it right here. And also for the, the resistors and the capacitors, just push them down all the way right up against the board. Uh, nice and neat like that. Um, this is the for the IC uh, to, pl to plug into. Uh, you could go ahead and put this in. See that little notch at the top? Uh, let's see if I can get that in view. That little notch. Uh, the other side doesn't have a notch like that. That notch goes to the top. Even though it doesn't really matter for this, just put it in the way it's supposed to go anyways. Just, uh, just for the heck of it. Um, of course, when you're putting the IC on top of it, the IC uh, has, a ro you have to put in the right uh, rotation. So uh, the IC, let me see if I can find it. There it is. has a little notch on the top. See that little dot or that little, yeah, that little notch at the top, top right there. Uh, there it goes. Uh, that needs to go towards the top right here. And you can see that in the drawing underneath, the little notch. So when you when you after you solder it all together and you're gonna put this in, put it in the right way, basically. So that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and solder this uh, together, and I'll be right back. So here it is all soldered up. All the components are in place. Here's the solder. Um, also, let me uh, take the chance to kind of, if you're buying this board and you are you don't have the tools to put it together, here's what I recommend you get. Um, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need something to clip uh, wires with nice little clipper like this. You're going to need a uh, solder. Okay, just a roll of solder. Um, you're going to need something to clean that clean that soldering tip with, so like a tip cleaner. Um, I also like this, uh, it's like a wire sponge or mesh that you clean the tip with as well. So I, what I usually do is I put the tip in here, uh, uh, thin the tip and then just uh, clean it off in here. Um, let's see. I highly recommend you get some uh, some of this uh, solder wick thing because you're uh, if if it's your first time soldering or you haven't soldered that much, you're gonna make some mistakes and you're gonna need something like this to to uh, uh, desolder what you've soldered. So. Uh, like, for example, when I was soldering this, I accidentally connected a couple of these. And to disconnect them, you're going to need to suck the solder out. And what you do is you put this over it, like that. And you put the solder tip against that, and it just sucks the solder right off of there. Uh, so you, I highly recommend you get uh, one of these. And, uh, of course, you're going to need a soldering iron. Um, the one I'm using is uh, this one here. Okay, just a regular soldering tip. It's the this model here. It's the Weller. Let's see if I could get it to focus. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It's not focusing. It's this. Oh, there you go. Weller W E S fifty one. Um, it's relatively uh, inexpensive one. Uh, gets the job done. It's a really good one though. And uh, so yeah, I rec highly recommend you get these things uh, before you try to put this board together. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, next step is to put the IC in there and the knob uh, caps as well and uh, uh, give it a try. All right, so I went ahead and uh, put it together, the case. I actually don't like the way they made this case. It's, uh, it's just, I don't know if you could hear that. 
it's just kind of a uh, loose and it just doesn't feel very good um, but I managed to get it together and uh, had to kind of wiggle it all into place and then put the screws in um, and I accidentally uh, this is a very like uh, these edges are very weak and if you just press a little bit too hard you'll end up chipping it so I chipped this corner here where the screw goes in so for example if you put the screw in like this it's supposed to get right in there there's this little star shaped holder that it fastens into and yeah it, as I was trying to get it in there it just chipped off and so yeah I don't like the case very much um, but uh, it works I mean it, it, it holds everything together um, it's just plexiglass type of case I'm not it's plastic I guess I don't know uh, so I haven't put these on yet because I'm not exactly sure how I'm supposed to put them on yet but I'll put them on later uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test this out and see how it works all right so I put in some wires here and screwed them down um, looks like it has a this first one is ground square wave and then this last uh, output is sine and triangle wave um, it has multiple settings via jumpers so you can put it on sine wave or triangle wave um, on this side here it has the uh, Hertz and like the frequency um, yeah and the the bad thing about this is it doesn't come with the power supply so you have to have your own uh, power adapter to use this so luckily I have one where it has like interchangeable tips and allows you to select from multiple uh, settings um, if you do have something like this it's a very good thing to have uh, just be careful to put it in the right orientation um, you could put it in either this way or this way but you know it switches the polarity um, I tested this with the multimeter just to make sure that the inner side is positive and the outer side is ground uh, negative and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug that in alright so right now I set this to 9 volts this is supposed to work between 9 to 12 volts so I went ahead and set this to 9 volts um, yeah what I have here is let's move over to this side is an oscilloscope and I set it up so I could go in and uh, give this a try and test it out. Well, uh, so I hooked it up to my oscilloscope and I'm going to play around with it a little bit and I'll do a separate video on what, how it works and, uh, and if all these settings work right and how the knobs work and uh, how it shows up on the oscilloscope and if it's any good or not. Uh, so that will be a separate video. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and thumbs up. Thanks.